Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB, and today we're looking at all things dark academia. This video was requested by one of our lovely subscribers and it's for all of you who want to know what this style is and also for those of you seeking to conjure a dark academia ambiance in your home. If you're not new here then you've probably already seen our video on the romantic academia style, however as we're going into the darker, gloomy months of the year where everyone's starting university again, I thought that it was the perfect time to talk about this mysterious aesthetic and add it to my autumn series on the channel, because autumn is dark academia's season after all. Dark academia has grown as a concept and lifestyle over the past couple years and right now there's over 1.7 million posts on Instagram. But it's only recently that we started to see it infiltrate mainstream design and actually influence the home decor that you see in shops, so if you're interested in creating a dark academia room, let's jump in. For those of you who don't know what it actually is, in layman's terms, dark academia is a look and subculture that romanticizes learning. It's romantic academia's moody, mystical sister. It's an academic aesthetic that incorporates gothic styles, literature, poetry, arts, architecture, music, and general gothic-related topics, and is related to finding beauty within the darkest places. If I were to pick a place in the world that really showcases dark academia, it would be Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland. This city is the personification of dark academia. We went there a couple of years ago to visit family, and there's such a historic gothic feeling throughout the town. And in terms of dark academia movies and TV shows, think Harry Potter, Queen's Gambit, Dead Poets Society, The Chair, The Theory of Everything, and Goodwill Hunting. I'm sure you get the idea. Think gothic and Romanesque architecture, stacks of classic books, the Victorian era, and spending the day admiring artwork in a gallery. If I were to describe the aesthetic, I would say it's gloomy, gothic-inspired, extravagant, collegiate, with a pinch of spooky undercurrents. What started as a literary genre eventually turned into a social media storm and became a lifestyle. The first aspect to think about when carrying out your dark academia room makeover is, of course, which colours should you choose? Now, because dark academia dwells a lot in the Victorian era, New England and British universities look to those places for colour inspiration. As the style implies, dark hues are going to take prominence. Deep browns, emerald greens, spiced orange, midnight blue, golden beige, merlot and mahogany reds, and of course, black tones too. Before we go through dark academia decor, I think that it's first important to decorate the walls around us, and to really bring about a dark academia vibe, think about plastering your walls in flock wallpaper. By the end of the 17th century, flock wallpapers as we know them had appeared. By the third quarter of the 18th century, there was hardly a country house in England that didn't have at least one room decorated in a similar way. And I think that this is a perfect example of drawing on the vintage aspects in the style. Dark Academia also draws inspiration from literature and education, and if that sparks your fascination with the aesthetic, maybe decorate using a wallpaper that resembles books, or for a more authentic feel, you could create your own gallery wall with literary and cultural findings of your own. Or if you're looking for a more demure approach to wall decor, Victorian wall panelling may be the right fit. I think that this is quite good for homes that are very modern because it automatically creates a nostalgic atmosphere. And this is actually a pretty simple DIY project that can be done using wooden moulding strips. When looking at the materiality of the space, in terms of soft textures, I think that it would be on brand to emulate fabrics found in preppy clothing such as corduroy, plaid or tartan, velvet and tweed. So look to using those textiles when picking furniture for your home. 
Now that we've established a color scheme and dressed the room with textiles, we can start to piece together the interior by adding furniture. More than anything, the dark academia aesthetic calls for woods, in particular dark woods such as mahogany, walnut, ebony, dark teak, or stained oak. The more elaborately carved the furniture, the truer your space will be to the style. Look for pieces in vintage shops, online and in markets that have clearly been made in another time in history. For example, gothic entry storage benches, bookcases with glass casing, Victorian dresses, vintage stationery organisers, worn coffee tables, Chesterfield leather armchairs, and of course this wouldn't be complete without a desk or writing bureau. The key takeaway is that you're looking for pieces that ooze character. But of course, the easiest and most pleasing part of a dark academia makeover is when we can start to bring in home decor pieces. And an integral part of that is of course lighting. For decorative lighting, chamber stick candle holders are hands down the top item I think of when thinking of a dark academia room. Perfect for reading under candlelight or adding to the dark academia ambiance. Regarding task lighting, which is lighting that will be used for the majority of the time within the space, ornate chandeliers or aged wall sconces will not only add to the drama but also be practical for everyday use. My last point on lighting, in order to create moody lighting, it's key that you choose bulbs that are dimmable. That way you can achieve a shadowy, cosy interior with ease. If we want to build on the mystique of the space and bring in those mysterious vibes even more, involve gemstones and crystals in the mix. The Harry Potterfication of the style, if you like. More general items to bring this scheme together would be vintage sewing machines, look for Singer sewing machines as a start, globes, decorative bookends, Greek busts or plinths, vintage tea sets in a dark colour preferably, telescopes, armillary spheres, brass photo frames, glass cloches with trinkets inside, antique clocks and gilded mirrors because an array of curios will allow you to add your own touch while creating intrigue. However, I should probably say that if you're personally into this lifestyle and aesthetic, choose to highlight your hobbies as home decor pieces. Let me explain. Sometimes with this aesthetic, I see people throw in all kinds of interesting items associated with activities into their interiors. But isn't this lifestyle about exploring cultural and educational passions that you love yourself? Chances are, if you love this aesthetic, you probably already have a hobby that you love, so rather than pick a random assortment of objects that look dark academia-y, dark academia-y? Select and highlight your favourite pieces instead. Maybe you love writing, in which case, buy a vintage typewriter. Of course, reading can be highlighted with decadent bookcases. Or if painting is your vice, you could create a small art studio space to really express your love for it. I think my main point, which I'm trying to say, is just be mindful when it comes to choosing smaller activity-based pieces for your home. It's about having a passion and interest in your chosen subject and evolving your skills and being a constant learner. Like I said in the beginning, a lot of these home decor pieces are actually in mainstream stores now, but if you're really struggling to find things, hunt in vintage shops or on Etsy. Okay, so with this style, we tend to think gloomy, rain, and wanting to stay inside our homes, as if we were students in Edinburgh watching the rain out of our windows. However, in true Jacqueline fashion, for the horticulturalists, I wanted to mention some plants and flowers to dress your space or even plant in your garden. Rosebush archways, or just any archway in general really, gives an enchanted feel to a garden. On the interior, flowers in amber vases or old apothecary bottles help to tie in with the golden beige sepia tones I mentioned in the beginning. Roses, baby's breath, and dried thistles are just some examples of how to piece this bouquet together. To bring your interior together, you should of course have some artwork on display. My top choices for creating a dark academia inspired interior are antique portraits, botanical prints, and celestial artwork. I think that these all really give you an intellectual and old world feel to your space.
To save you time and money, you can actually now purchase Dark Academia Gallery wall prints in a pack, which makes it 10 times easier to decorate. I feel like this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't recommend some kind of literature, right? After all, Dark Academia is dedicated to scholarly learning. That being said, here are some recommendations to read, but also put on display in your space. The Historian, The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Secret History, Ninth House, A Lesson in Vengeance, The Atlas Six, A Deadly Education, Ghosts of Harvard, Renaissance Gothic, and The Library of the Dead. If you want even more inspiration for books or home decor, I've linked some other YouTube creators down in the description box that you may find helpful. What do you guys love most about the Dark Academia look? Please give this video a like or leave me some kind of emoji down below to let me know that you enjoyed the video. And if you love interior design, home decor and all that creative stuff, feel free to subscribe or join us on Patreon. That's it for today's video though guys and I will see you in the next one, bye!